Alright. Ready? Action. Well, hello there, anonymous people of the internets. You're probably wondering what we're doing in this workshop. So, Alan, why don't you show them? We have the DJI Phantom 4. So, this is the long awaited sequel to the DJI Phantom 3. It comes with a host of new features and some new sensors, but before we get into all that, we probably need to open this box, right, Alan? Alright, do it. So this, uh, the DJI Phantom 4 retails for around $1,399, so after tax it will be around $1,500 depending on where you live in terms of the sales tax. So here it comes. Here it comes. Well, let's go slow. It's not Looks like we got a pretty sweet case for it. Yeah, so this, uh, so it comes with this case. It seems pretty sturdy. I've seen a lot of people on the internet, they seem to be using this case like as a, as basically like daily carry for their DJI Phantom, so it should be safe enough for use. It even has like a latch on the front. Kind of lock latch. Accidentally open. Let's open this now. That's pretty fancy, man. Dude, you know how to open this? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, you, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta turn the latch to open it. Turn the latch. Actually. Unlocks it. Look at this. Okay. It's pretty fancy for a... Yeah, so here's a drone. Wow, okay, so first we have controller, got little antennas, and your screen holder, seems like, you can have this one. Then the actual Phantom itself, it's actually a lot smaller than I was expecting, yeah. to be honest. So I've actually played around with the Phantom 2 before, and this compared to a Phantom 2, it does seem to be a bit smaller and sleeker. And so yeah, one thing I've changed is the, the battery compartment. So the Phantom 2 and Phantom 3 batteries no longer work for the new generation DJI. Supposedly they like redesigned the case so it'll be more aerodynamic and th it does can include a bigger battery and gives you five extra minutes of flight time, but we'll see if that holds up to their claims. What else is in the box? Let's see. What do we have here? Oh, here's the extra blades and actually all the blades it seems like. Does it come with extras? Yep, eight blades. So eight blades, so it comes four extra. It comes with a nice power adapter. They are also wrapped in plastic, so you have to take that off. So I'm so going to assume this is the charger for pretty much the drone and the battery, and maybe the controller. Yep. Here's a USB adapter, USB micro to USB A. Some pamphlets and whatnot. So the the guy at the Apple store we actually bought this from told us that we have to register this drone or we're gonna find a lot of money. We clearly <laughs> did that before this video, so just, just trust us that we've done our research and registered this drone. But, um, Here's that it. Regular USB cable. That's all. Okay. Looks very. Here's phone. Here's phone. So that's about it. So here's like a better view of the interior of the case for those people who want to see. Fit all your goodies. What was this thing? That was a USB adapter. Oh, this is a USB micro to micro USB. USB. So, yeah. So many blades. Let's see what's in here. Okay, So here's a closer look at the at the DJI Phantom itself. Cut it off. Camera's kind of far, but it comes with the same three-axis stabilization. Camera is pretty much about the same. Now it shoots raw for photography. It should have better video performance. We'll have to see. On the bottom of the Phantom, you can see there's two ultrasonic sensors, so you'll be able to fly it indoors because it will be able to estimate how tall, I mean, how high it is above the ground. And then at the front, you see there's like these two little holes going up. These are also ultrasonic radars, I think, or ultrasonic sensors. So if you're like flying to the wall, it's gonna it's gonna fly up or fly into your person, it'll just stop. So we're, we'll be testing these features out. And then on the side, now this is where the micro USB is, as, all, as well as where the SD card. And that's pretty much it. The controller has a nice stand just to let it sit. Yeah, so this should be able to fit an iPad, right? Yeah, yeah it's gonna fit an iPad on it. Anyway, so this DJI comes with light bridge. Is it light bridge or light link? I'll probably look it up later. So the DJI Phantom 2 that I use actually used the Wi-Fi module. So the, the range was actually 
quite bad. Like you couldn't fly more than a mile before the cutting out signal. But according to DJI, the, the the light bridge can, you know, you can communicate with the drone for up to five kilometers or, or 3.1 miles for those who live in the United States. So it should be pretty good range, but the FAA does regulate this. They say you can't fly a drone outside of your sight. So yeah, don't, do that. don't do that. Don't do that. Don't don't get caught by them. But yeah, on the controller on the back, there's two buttons, C1, C2. Not sure what these do yet. On the top left, there's this toggle on the old controller I remember. This used to control the like the camera will like mm. pitch down and pitch up. And I guess there's one on the right side, which might do something similar. Well, we'll figure this out. We're gonna do a quick demo of like how to how all this stuff works. Put it together. Put it together and try to fly it. Hopefully, so just stay tuned. And cut. <laughs> Two thousand years later. After an hour and a half of charging, your drone should finally be charged. And at this point, you can start setting up the controller and the drone. So what you need for this is essentially you need an iOS or Android device and then you should have it connected to the controller itself. So we already set up our drone, and I'd just like to tell you about one thing that we did find kind of difficult for some reason. We actually did not know how to turn on the drone because we don't read the instruction manuals like normal people. Anyways, it's not intuitive, I guess. You would think all you have to do is hold down the power button and the drone should turn on. Well, that frankly is not the case. You have to first press it and then hold it on the second press. And then you should hear like a little beep boop sound coming from the drone. And you do the same thing with the controller. You press it once, and then you press it again. And I did it wrong. Until the red light lights up and turns green. So at this point, you should be able to launch the DJI Go app. If you don't have this app, you can download this from the iOS or Google Play Store. Move the drone, get a better view of the screen itself. So this is the main splash screen of the DJI Go app. It should be telling you that your device is a Phantom 4. So we've already set up this uh, Phantom, like I said, and I don't really know how to reset like everything back to factory settings, so I apologize. So I won't be able to show you exactly how to set up the drone itself, but it's very, very straightforward. Essentially, all you have to do is you give the drone a name, you select the like the flight stick configuration that you like to use, and then finally you create a DJI Go account. If you are somehow unable to do those simple steps, there is something wrong with you. I don't recommend that you should be flying a drone at all. But since we've already hooked up everything, we're just going to click on camera. And then, so, if you're launching the camera for the first time, I'll show you a safety tutorial. And I'm just going to go over quickly some safety guidelines for those of you who don't tend to read these safety guidelines. So, first thing is, you should be flying in good weather, don't fly in a tornado or anything. It should be open area in case it falls, you won't want to kill anyone. Avoid obstacles, which is pretty common sense, and avoid power lines because that's just not good. And then this screen is telling you about the GPS satellite count. So when you first start on the drone, it'll start searching for satellites. And it might take a bit of time to actually lock on to a good amount of them. So it says like 0 to 6 is dangerous. If your drone loses contact with the satellite and you press return home, it's not going to know how to return home. So just don't fly when there's only 0 to 6 satellites locked on. So 10 to 18 is what they recommend and you should probably follow that guideline if you ever want to see your drone again. Check your batteries, that's pretty obvious. In the app itself, it also have an indication of how long you can fly it till. That shouldn't be an issue. So then there's the set the return to home altitude. So what this essentially means is when you press return to home, it'll come back to your original GPS location and it'll hover at a certain height. You know, say like place you your home address has like a lot of trees and stuff. You want to set the altitude a bit higher than the trees so it doesn't like land in the trees. And I think I just have to hit confirm. And now all that's set up and we start flying. So let's, uh, let me turn on the camera so you can see. So this is what the screen looks like. So let's go outside and let's try out some of these flight features. Okay, to start the drone, you hold both sticks down and out and it turns it on. And for my controls, my left stick actually goes forward and backwards and left and right strafing 
and my right stick goes up and down vertically and then left and right turns the drone and then to land it you actually just have to hold down and the drone will gently land on the ground so we're going to test one of the features of the camera and the ultrasonic sensors supposedly they would use the ultrasonic sensors to avoid obstacles and stop and some say man is the most dangerous obstacle of all so here i am I'm gonna sacrifice my body for science um, alan's gonna fly the drone straight into me and hopefully it stops in time before it cuts me up and just one quick note, please don't use sports mode because it does seem to disable the ultrasonic sensors in the front. So if you do do it in a sports mode, you will get cut. So let's uh, see if this works. Alan didn't pull back on the trigger. He actually wanted to hurt me and he couldn't because the drone is smarter than that. So thank you, science. So we're testing the follow mode right here. It's the third button down. You go from normal to follow. So right here, um, I'm actually too close to, to Kevin right now. So I have to adjust the drone to get a certain height and distance away from him. I select him and then I press go when it's green. So the drone is gonna now follow Kevin around as he runs around back here. Um, the drone will actually lose him in this video and to get him back, you'll have to manually override where the drone is panning and a little go button will appear next to whoever you're trying to follow. And you just press that again and the drone will begin to follow them over and over again until you tell it to stop. So here you go, you, we lose him and see the go pop up. So I select it and then the drone knows to continue to follow Kevin. He'll hide behind here, be lost, and then the drone will just lock on to whatever it thought it needed to. And this is where I have to manually override it to find Kevin again, press go, and then it just continues doing what you ask it to. Yeah. Thanks Alan for trying to follow me. I think I was clever enough to outsmart the drone. But anyways, this is just a quick look at most of the features that are new to DJI Phantom 4. For a more in-depth review, we'll actually have something coming up in the next couple months as we do more field testing. Coming up next is going to be a demo reel of all the footage that we shot. It's going to be downsampled to 1080p, so the rest of the video is 1080p. But I'll also upload a uh, 4K original video soon after. So, thanks for watching. Enjoy.